All right, everyone, the UN Global Migration Compact is slowly dying off as an idea. At first, it looked like it would basically be evil Trump and Viktor Orban in Hungary that would stand against it and everyone else would want it. The U.S. would be left alone. Now it's 18 countries that have pledged not to sign. Uh, I'm going to read you off the list first. And just to uh, start this, uh, the United States, and this is dated a couple days ago, so it might be more now. He's this uh, Manny Otto is from Canada. He's hoping Canada will not sign, but with Trudeau at the helm, they probably will. So let's not kid ourselves. Uh, the United States, Hungary, Austria, Bulgaria, Poland, Israel, Estonia, the Czech Republic, Croatia, Slovenia, Slovakia, Russia, China, Korea, Japan, Belgium, Denmark, and Italy. Um, so that's a that's a list uh, comprehensive i believe of the countries that have rejected it like they've sworn not to sign i think australia is is optioning that as well they, they're not on the list did i already read them off no they're not on this austria and australia are not the same country by the way some people get that wrong uh so so basically it's having problems nobody wants the compact other than desperately impoverished nations that want to wash their hands of their tired and poor and their dissidents and foist them off on other countries so they're socialistic uh, they don't believe in free markets. They have shitty economies because they're run by shitty people like Tin Horn dictators. They want free movement so that all of that excess homelessness and, and impoverished people can just go elsewhere. Then they won't feel as much political pressure to reform their own systems. And actually, you know, these Tin Horns will be less wealthy if they do. And I'll tell you this. The globalists are a lot like tin horns, except that they're multinational tin horns. It's not like, you know, El Cabron running his little uh, uh, fucking banana republic economy or something like that. It's more like someone who lives in a penthouse in some uh, nondescript part of a big city fomenting how to take over the world. They really are like evil villains, the globalists are. They don't care about the poor. Uh, they use that as an excuse. Think of the poor. Think of these poor third worlders with these, these children. You can see all their ribs and then some. No, no, no. That's just the imagery they use to get you to, to accept their sob stories. What they really want is to create more poverty everywhere else and to make more money. If you're a multinational, here's the problem. People, generally speaking, consider it good to have national loyalty, like ties to your nation. People in office, people who do business or whatever, to have national loyalty. If, though, you do an inordinate proportion of your business in other countries and become a globalist, that is tempered somewhat. Because where before you only cared about your own nation predominantly, and they're like, well, you know, if someone else suffers, that's regrettable, but I've, I've got mine, basically. Instead, you're thinking, well, I might suffer too. If, if the, the U.S. trade war against China prevails, my, uh, my dividends might decrease because I've got so many holdings in China. Basically, they stop having national loyalty, which means they don't care about anyone in the world. They just want more slave labor. They want tin horn despotism. It's easier to control some cartel member than it is a person in government who's actually not corrupt. You know, few and far between as they may be. They're fearful of populism. They're terrified of nativism. Uh, they're not terrified because, oh, my Nazis or, or anything, ethnic argument or whatever. They're terrified because of money. The globalists are afraid of free speech and populism because of money concerns, not because of human dignity. When Tim Cook came out the other day and said, well, hate has no place on our platforms. No, it's not about that. It's about wanting to make more money. You want to kick off people that are bad for your advertisement uh, income, basically. That's what it's all about. That and you want to grandstand to the far left that tends to buy the Crapple products and say, hey, yeah, I stand for progressivism. Buy more of my shitty, ch shitty shit, basically, is what Tim Cook wants. Uh, but the compact is on its last leg. Once it hits you know, a certain tipping point, it basically gets abandoned. If there aren't enough signees to ensure that it actually is meaningful, I mean, you got half the EU countries on this fucking list. The EU already has internally free movement. I mean, most of Eastern Europe has already signed off against it. Why? Because they understand that it's a problem. It's already become a problem within the EU. They don't want another layer of it being problematic. Um, I oppose this compact, as though you couldn't tell. I think all sane people do. Uh, and this, by the way, is the same compact that people, this is half true. Uh, say, well, it'll criminalize uh, criticism of migration. Not not entirely. In interpersonal conversation, if you're just saying, well, I oppose migration in a general sense, it wouldn't do anything. It would, and this would be unconstitutional here, so it wouldn't have affected us anyway, by the way. 
U.S. Constitution supersedes anything at the U.N. level. Uh, it, it would have criminalized elements of the media doing so, <laughs> which means that for the, for all the normies out there, that I mean, it's already 99% pro-globalism anyway that they're absorbing, but that 1% would be burned out, uh, essentially, by the uh, migration compact. This is not for my children. This is not for my human dignity. This is not think of these poor frowning faces and these pregnant women that just want to be part of your beautiful, vibrant, diverse culture, por favor. That's the, uh, the excuse that globalism always uses. Oh, look at the, yeah, basically, uh, 10 tear-jerking photos that make you say fuck laws and borders and shit. That's their excuse. What they really want is more greenbacks. Oh, they want more money and wealth. They just want to plaster themselves in it. If they could melt down gold and jump in and take a bath without burning themselves to death, they'd do that too, because they're miserly. Misers have simply learned that it's better to put a friendly face on and ideologically browbeat people that don't want you to be a miser. It's like if Scrooge McDuck got a PR campaign going. That's basically what globalism is, <laughs> except it's ten times worse, because it's not a funny cartoon. It's, it's not an amusing topic. These people cause untold scales of harm around the world to all people in it, of every race and creed, age group, it doesn't really matter. And to them, someone with a million dollars is the same as someone who lives under a highway overpass in a fucking soggy cardboard box with two cans of beans to their name. They're the same thing. They've got extravagant wealth, the likes of which you and I can't even comprehend. Tim Cook and Zuckerberg and the, and the fucking the, the robber barons at the UN, all of these people are fantastically wealthy, and, and they consider it an off day if they only make a hundred million or something. That's ultimately what it's about. No, I do not trust such people to design public discourse. I don't trust them to censor. I don't, not that I would trust anyone to do that. I don't trust them to govern because they've shown an unwillingness to comply with the basic rudiments of human dignity. They've shown that they lack the intellectual necessities to govern in an even handed manner. And they're simply, they're, it's a, basically it's just a fucking floor show. When they say, think of the children, would you have dignity or something? No, it's not about that. It's you want more advertising revenue. You want more control. And through that control, you get more money. That's about all. Peace out.